Hi everybody, uh, I was just checking that I am live and it appears I am. Um, that was a film from Latvia, um, from the Liepjötze Concert Hall in Eze. I'm sure I've pronounced that incorrectly, but it showed live music on the roof of the concert hall called Great Amber, the film, and it just shows what can be done uh, socially distanced even during the COVID pandemic. Um, and I hope you all stayed online yesterday to see the fantastic performance of, albeit a reduced version of Pastoral, Beethoven's Symphony Number no. six, 6, the Pastoral, played very innovatively and beautifully in such a great space in Bonn. I just wish, certainly, we could have been there in person, but it was great to see and hear uh, and to hear such high quality musicians working again together, even though they were standing a little apart. So it comes to me to, as president, as chair of the board of the European Music Council, um, with a a little bit of a sad heart because this is the last time I will be here as chair and as president after Sunday. You'll have someone new in that role and that's as it should be. Um, but I'm happy, very, very happy that the conference and the content of the forum has been of such a fantastically high standard. And my congratulations to our team in Bonn and for the technical provision, uh, which is so difficult when you have so many people with different devices from all around the world trying to get on to the system. So well done, everybody. I'm just going to go through the program uh, and just give my response, a, a few sentences, if you like, from each session um, just to remind you of what has gone on. We started the very first day with the opening keynote speech from Angelique Kijo and how inspiring and challenging was that. And something I took from it, Angelique said that music and food are equally important. We can't live without either. How true that is. We moved into Audrey, my board colleague, chairing a session on what place for music in society and key elements of that session. We must place culture at the center of political debate. We must also address mental health issues. And as was quoted from no less than Nietzsche, without music, life would be a mistake. We must ensure politicians in all member states understand their responsibility and commitment to culture and the arts. 
we moved on to the working conditions of music with FIM, where it was clear that a, a very important issue is looking after the health and well-being of musicians, paying attention to the copyright directive on which Mark did such a fantastic session earlier today, and the rights of freelance musicians are paramount, but we must bring back live music. Then Simona and Ruth hosted the first of two lounges. And just to remind you, the second will be tomorrow at four o'clock, 1600 hours, Central European time, where the conference hopes to make a statement. Uh, and we will talk about that more uh, tomorrow. Uh, or maybe even later today. The third session was on the Sustainable Development Goals, chaired by our colleague from IMC, Celia, where we saw that music is critical to the success of the Sustainable Development Goals. Music binds us together. Music is the most effective and economically sustainable art form and our colleague from Australia reminded us that music is not a magic bullet, but it provides pleasure in emotional stimulation. We saw the importance of lobbying and educating politicians. I've been doing it for years. Those decision makers to ensure that venues are at the core of every city's eco structure. Maria chaired the session on weighing out values. We saw that shifting sands have different Euro countries in terms of how they approach music and value it when they're within their own constitutions. Gender quality is a right and should not be politically driven. Music is a tool for change and we need to take better care of each other and our communities. Then we heard the fantastic performance from the Beethoven Orchestra of Bonn. The fifth session on day three, chaired by Victoria, my board colleague and vice chair. We looked at, is music the new villain on the block? We saw how governments are concentrating on travel and hospitality at the moment, but not so much on the live music scene, on theatres and venues. And as Batista reminded us, the first Greek theatre opened 2,500 years ago, and the theatre is still alive and well, and should be at the core of our heritage. We need to change to a more blended learning approach and live and digital as Willem, another of my board colleagues made very clear, live and digital can go together to make a better experience, especially for children and young people. And technology is now much better as we've experienced during this forum and more readily available. But we also can't lose our children, certainly those that are socially deprived or not so able to access technology. Many don't have access to computers or laptops or even a Wi-Fi signal. We must take care of all of our music families. We need a more sustainable approach. One gig is not enough now. We need to ensure that musicians remain in the location of a gig and are used by the community far more effectively. Billy Cobham's uh, workshop was mentioned. I also went to a Billy Cobham workshop in Glasgow and also Arturo Sanjaval, a famous Cuban trumpet player. He insists everywhere he performs that he does a workshop. Uh, this is the new today and will be the new tomorrow. Music is a totally inclusive activity and must remain so in school and club alike. We need music for our souls. 
and Mark's presentation on the copyright directive will be made available to you. And finally, Barbara, a friend and colleague over many years, an excellent presentation on what is happening in terms of the Commission and the European Parliament and the Creative Europe Fund now at its highest level ever. Thank goodness for that. An ambition programme, a standalone programme for culture, the first time there has been a real buy-in from both the European Parliament and the Commission. She made it clear that the Commission now properly recognised the role of women and also the new Euro Green agenda. And we must reinterpret innovation and creativity. It's not just about creativity, but it's about social and societal benefit. And we must raise skill levels and build audience and communities, survival skills, if you will. And music now plays a key role in Europe, both aesthetically and economically. And I was delighted that Barbara mentioned the role of networks, having been so closely involved with the European Music Council and having been so proud and honoured to do so, that the role of the European Music Council and our colleague networks uh, in Europe as part of the Creative Europe Fund are critically important in this regard. I just want to pay a quick mention and tribute to the music that I hope you've seen and heard online. Obviously the Beethoven Orchestra, Fabiana Striffler, the young jazz violinist, um, maybe tomorrow's Stefan Grappelli, Wannabule, which I think also Barbara mentioned, a young nine-piece German band from Berlin, and the Lord of the Amazing Panther. What a name for a band. Um, a four-piece um, house band. Um, again, great music that hopefully satisfied everyone's tastes. So, colleagues, dear friends, I wish I could... I really wish I could see you all, but I can't. You can see me and uh, we'll meet in a moment uh, so that you can meet us and, and tell us what you really think of the forum. Um, the, the COVID lounge, as I said, will be available to you tomorrow, the second COVID lounge at four o'clock uh, Central European time in the afternoon. Uh, there will be a feedback survey uh, by email, which please, please, would you complete, because it helps us so much. Uh, you, As I said, uh, in the meeting space, uh, which you will be directed to uh, following my words, um, you will be able to meet the colleagues from the EMC who you haven't seen. You've seen Simona. Uh, and Ruth and Katerina and I think you've also seen in the chat and maybe seen uh, in one of one of the sessions uh, our other colleagues uh, Isabel uh, and Maria but you you will also see them all in a moment uh, and they will be introduced to you uh, and I'm, I'm sure you would want to thank them too. Um, so my personal thanks to my colleagues in Bonn who are miss, miss even more than they will know. Uh, I want to thank all the speakers and all those people who have presented, especially our last three colleagues who have uh, given us the technical information we need uh, after Barbara's presentation. I want to thank my colleagues on the board. It's a great board and a strong board and voting is still open i believe for the new board there are 10 excellent candidates um, and i know that the future of the european music council is secure and strong uh, and last but not least thank you all um, i've seen many names coming up in the chat 
that I know very, very well, many dear friends and colleagues who have taken part in the sessions. Um, but I think that's enough for me. Um, it's been a great experience and I think the forum has worked incredibly well. So Simona, Ruth, I expect one of you to pop up in a moment uh, and tell people what is going to happen next. Uh, we know what's going to happen next because you'll be able to meet us all in the meeting room. Here comes Ruth, uh, a smiling face that I've loved so much over these years. And here comes my other, the other half, the other third uh, of the, uh, the three musketeers. <laughs> who will also speak. So colleagues, friends, uh, colleagues become friends and friends are always colleagues. And it's uh, au revoir from me for now, never goodbye. And uh, Simone and Ruth can guide you to the next room where you, where you can meet, meet us all uh, and tell us what you really think, but be kind. And uh, look forward to seeing you all. Um, in the future and look forward to seeing you on sunday of course sunday morning at 8 30 for me 9 30 for you the annual members meeting uh, where we will discover who is successful on the new board and you'll see some of the plans from my colleagues for the future and uh, the future is bright Thank you, thank you so much, Ian. Normally, you know, it would be Root and myself, we would just take you in our middle and give you a little kiss on each of your cheeks because that's what you deserve so much. Um, all the big thank yous um, as will be in the official goodbye because you're still our president until end of Sunday. Um, but thank you very much for everything. And now um, I would like to ask everyone, um, to leave this room again and to go to the wonder meeting space and you can meet and chat and talk to Ian also in person and uh, to us and to all your fellow colleagues. Maybe you want to grab a drink. Uh, this is the best we can do in networking digitally. I think it's an alternative, but we really would love to hug you and thank you personally and not digitally, but we will definitely do that when it's possible again. So please, everyone, join us in wonder, have a glass of whatever with you, and uh, let's chat a little informally 